I was studying in Madras and got a call from my father who was working in Kola gold fields that I should come to Kola gold fields to take him to Uttaparthi. There were no cell phones and the phone call came to my grandfather who sent word for me. I immediately left for KGF because I was happy that I could drive the car for over 200 miles not keen on seeing Swami. So I took my parents in the car. We left for Bangalore. From Bangalore, we left for Puttaparthi. All along, I was asking, who is this Satsai Baba whom you are visiting? What is the greatness? My father said, I met him in Bhagavantam's house and he invited me for Shivaratri. So we are going there. So we reached the place. There was no road at that time. It was a mud track. And our car was a large one, DeSoto, a low flooring. We had a many bumps and all that. Finally reached Puttaparthi at around 12 o'clock in the afternoon. We missed the Harti and we were asked to stay in the evening for Swami's discourse and bhajan. There were no rooms except verandas, which my father and mother was provided. I was sleeping in the car. Evening came, 6 o'clock, bhajan started. Around 7.38, Swami had convulsions and he started removing shivalingams of small size, six to seven numbers. And the bhajan continued in the whole night. So you saw the Lingod Bhavam ah. uh, from Bhagwan. Ah. Which year was this? Sir? Uh, 59. 1959 yeah. when Bhagwan manifested uh, six to seven lingams. Six lingams, small size. Small size, yeah. one after one. One after another. You were there to witness it. I was witness to that. There were hardly four, five hundred people at that time because the uh, road to Prashantilayam, coming to Prashantilayam was very difficult. So I was wondering, what if this man is a magician or what? Bringing all uh, shivalingam from his mouth. All night I was wondering who is this man is. Hollow of hair. Red jubbar, orange uh, dhoti, and going over to small mad. So I was thinking on that lines. But how was your uh, experience the first time you were in Puttaparthi and first time you are seeing this Shivaratri celebrations? Can you tell us more about that Shivaratri of 1959? That Shivaratri was not, I was not very keen in observing what was happening because my uh, my aim was only to drive the car and go back. So I have not attached any importance to the Shivaratri. Next day morning, Swami said, uh, Prasadam is distributed. And at that time, I was giving photographs of uh, all the devotees to whom he had come. Prasadam was given. And there was an interview of all the people who came. My father and mother, myself, went into the interview room. He talked to my father and mother. It was not at all audible what he was talking to my parents. I was not able to hear. I also joined, he said, I want to talk to you separately. I was taken aback. He said, uh, "What? Uh, I was having negative thoughts about him. Maybe he will ask. He said, uh, what are you doing in Madras? I said, I'm studying. No, you're not studying. You are going to films with film stars. He said that. He said that, yes, I was going to films with film stars. I was wondering who told this man what I was doing in Madras. Then he said, your health is spoiled. You have ulcers in the stomach. I was wondering who could have told this man what I was doing and what my health is. I was really shaken up. He said, you drop your parents, come back to me. I was keen to come back because I want to know who has told him. Okay. Uh, my father doesn't know, my grandpa, my grandparents did not know how this man came to know what I am. So next day, after about one week, I came back, curious to find out what he is going to tell me. So my journey started from Bangalore. That time there was only one train going to Sikandarabad. I used to get down at Penukonda at the midnight, 12 o'clock wait for the morning bus at 6 o'clock which comes to Penukonda 
go to bukkapatnam by two hours journey from bukkapatnam cross the kottacheru river walking another 2 kilometers and you reach prashanthi nilayam at the prashanthi nilayam we reach by 9 9 am swami would be in the portico counting the number of people who are coming there were only five six people i was one among them he said you go have a bath in the chitravati river and come for darshan chitravati river had no water there was only sand mm-hmm. we had to scoop the for water from the sand he had a makeshift water bath came to swami he said the interview will go on 11 o'clock during the bhajan time i sat there he told us you are completely ruined your health you have to i'll cure you i didn't believe him he said are you staying here i said no i'm not going back so i went back third time i came curious to because he didn't tell me who has told him about my ailments third time i came then he said that day i was very keen to go back to bangalore where my sister was living he said today i will cure you stomach fevers ulcers i didn't have a bath i was standing in the, i was sitting in the queue he called me today i'll cure your ulcers really perplexed he said we materialize vibhuti this man could cure vibhuti my ulcers so i went back to jamshedpur where my parents were there and told my father and mother this what has happened then dasara time my parents came to puttaparthi and i was also there along with my parents this is 1959 and he said uh, my father was called as kolar because he is from kolar gold fields kolar you have got six sons give one son to me i'll take care of him so they went back i stayed back that is convinced my journey in prashanthi nilayam <laughs> i had a blue suitcase which is clothes then i had to get new clothes pajama white pajama white uh, shirt and all that so i had three four pairs of pajamas and and i was staying there and he used to he allotted a shed not a shed veranda where i should sleep <clears throat> in the night he said you sleep near my door don't go beyond that door so there were two three people who used to sleep next to his door and i was used to a luxurious life in kolar gold fields soft pillows soft mattresses and all that here i was on a bare floor no pillow no blanket nothing why i should stay there what made me stay there i have no answers so i stayed there and nagar sankirtan would start at 5 5 am and they used to wake me up i was a late riser at 5 o'clock i used to go out to prashanthi lam out of prashanthi lam take a bath i requested one person who will give me hot water for four nas and the water was uh cooked or was boiled in firewood the smell of firewood is also in the water so i has to have a makeshift bath and feeling my cheeks i used to shave there was no mirror there was no electricity so i couldn't see my face by 6 o'clock i used to get ready for the darshan i was there 6 o'clock he would give a darshan everybody will go for breakfast then he requested some two three volunteers to do the work here and that's how i continued to stay there for months together in the hot summer my soles of the feet were had broken because i had no slippers so i used to go to a bus driver and take the grease from the driver to apply to my feet that is how i stayed there he used to a lot uh, voluntary duties digging some there were no jcb machines at those times there was one gujarati gentleman who came he wanted to uh, establish a gobar glass plant so we were assigned the task of uh, uh, digging the huge pit 
for the gobar gas plant in between he used to align me assign me duties as a dwarapalaka taking care of the people in the for the interview so there used to be time where 3 3 hours to 4 hours i used to stand in the morning again 3 hours in the evening and uh, after the interview he used to summon me so go with this person so and so so and so who is sitting in the hall and then some people used to say give money to those people that's other duties were there and then there was canteen also there was duties serving people and all that this totally started 100 people 200 people started coming and there were no people to serve we were doing all that and evening came bhajan again interviews all those things by 7 o'clock there's frequent power cuts were there so we had to be very careful about uh, what we are doing by 7:30 8 everything used to be silent there so we retire into the veranda sleep there get up next day morning prepare the sow table it went on like this and i was assigned the duty of decorating the shed there were two sheds one for ladies one for gents gents shed lot of people used to stay there and there was another shed for canteen so in the gents shed he used to have functions uh, dasara function navaratri functions and all that i was assigned the duty of dyeing the cloth taking the cloth by a pole with a stone climbing on the girders which is 20 feet down and we used to tie the cloth and decorate it by evening we start in the morning by evening it should be over because next day morning he will come for the dasara and all that i don't know how i did it i was also an electrician which i don't know anything i used to connect all the electric lights sound system made charge by swami so i was very busy and the function came i used to carry the shiddhi sai statue which is in the mandir and bring it to the shed where he will do the abhishekam vivid abhishekam and all that vivid jumps flow down from the jambu which kasturi was holding it i was standing next to him vivid will be spread all over me and all that and the same retinue uh, taking the statue back and keeping in the mandiram will go back in the evening he will come for the discourse dasara discourse and all that. it continued like that Shivaratri was any unique thing because Vibhuti would come out from his eyebrows, from his hair, everything, and he was very ferocious to look at. One would uh, really th- be bold enough to talk to him anything. Anyway, the Shivaratri also the same routine, uh, tying the cloth and all that, carrying the vigram and all that, and it one Shivaratri what time all of VIPs used to come at those days. they used to give big garlands and all that to pay and his uh, tranded or is the addition of the uh, the hoisting of the flag in the sec terrace one shivratri what is it did lot of garlands were there lot of big people came they were all in the uh, interview room he summoned me you come up gada garlands swami vaal andar kinda unnaru vaal undani you come with me you do not or so both of us went we climbed the second floor hoisted the flag our danda i put it on him all the way then from that he showered the petals on to other people who were down down there i was really amazed why i chose me when so many big people were there you know that's that and the function will start shivaratri so unique function we cannot describe in words how it has happened because i was witness to three shivalingams being come out of his mouth during the shivaratri one was in the old shed where he had given atmalingam then same i was given the duty of dwarapalaka there and not allow anybody inside only two people were there i used to control 1000 people there who used to come and they used to rush to the back side to have a glimpse of swami 
then the shivalingam of the shivaratri is there all night shivaratri is bhajan will go on and second time once it so happened that shanti vadika was built a open auditorium people were there and that shivaratri was very special because he was very very furious nobody could talk to him kasturi suraya kishtapa nan could talk to him ask him anything again that shivaratri he said you come with me you come for the car landing you don't bother about that i went with him came back and that shivaratri he was in shanti vedika bhajan started around 7:38 he was in a trance he will kept his hand like this and didn't open his eyes for half an hour there were a lot of vips who wanted to come to the stage he didn't allow anybody to shanti vedika he said close bolt the door inside only you should be there i was all alone from 8 o'clock 7:30 in the night 8:39 swami opened his eyes raja reddy all these people were looking at me and swami swami commanded me don't allow anybody those people are asking me to allow them how can i disobey swami finally swami opened his eyes he said yes nen anni lokalu 14 lokalu tirigi vachanu and he gave an explanation of what he saw the bhajan continued then he gave out a agnalingam i could see all the planets inside the lingam fire everything and such a big one almost as big as a egg and his lips were torn blood was there the kerchief which i had with him it was blood soaked there was a ball of jasmine flowers he said you keep it on that i kept it on that i said raatrantha nu ikkade undu don't allow everyone to run with the pike it was about 10 o'clock everyone raavad what to do while he was having this uh, he used to take a big vendi uh, chambulu neel taagevar warm water for shivaratri ki but water got over i was wondering how to get water for him luckily rajya reddy's cook was just there i signaled to him he got uh, one of a bindal of water he is kuchar he gave it to him then he blurted out that shivalingam he said you keep it evarni rane vaddu raatrinte ikkade undu how to freshen up and come back that was my idea he may come any time 3 o'clock 4 o'clock any time he may come just about 15 minutes i went to raja reddy's house freshed up myself came back he opened the door bangaro bagunava only two words he said then he took the shivaling up tapped me on the shoulder went away that next day in between shivaratri proceed he gave me one apple as a food that was the only food i had for 24 hours next day i was sleeping in raja reddy's veranda swami sent word one pichukara ye swami padukunnadu vaadu devatale paapam alsi poyadu padukoni that's what he said then afterwards i went it's a different thing modi i camp modi had want to conduct a day camp in the canteen shed i had to decorate the canteen